Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray, and on today's show, I meet a musician that I found their music on Jamendo, a streaming service that actually has Creative Commons music. And the more I looked into this person and this great song that they had, it was called uh, Sinking. And uh, you should check it out. It's on our Spotify playlist. But after discovering their music, I also discovered that they create a lot of beats. They actually have a site where they release beats for people to download and use and license and things like that. And they've got a lot of videos. And after talking with the person, found out that they only just started doing the songs that they've been doing like a couple of years ago, the playing guitar, singing, mostly what they were doing is they were producing and creating beats. So I was just amazed, not only at the just sound and songs that the person released, but they have continued to release many, many songs after the one song I discovered by them. So we talk more about that, about their production, about kind of their process and just music in general. So here is that conversation starting right now. Uh, my name's Tukon. I'm an artist, producer, um, basically just a songwriter. And um, yeah, my real name's Connor, but um, I make music and that's what I do. Okay. And I first I want to ask you, uh, actually, where are you located right now? I live in Colorado. Oh, you Denver, do? Yeah. Okay. All right. And now I want to ask you about the name. So every time, so I discovered you on a service, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but um, when I tried to find out more information on you, so I get autocorrected every time because it wants to spell toucan. So why is oh, yeah. it toucan and not toucan? Um, honestly, I made the name like when I was probably like 17, I'm 27 now, but, um, okay. it was when I started making music and like, I don't know why I stuck with it, but I had definitely did the con just because of my name, Connor. But oh, then I was like, that makes sense. All yeah. Right. Then I was like, okay, this is just like an original, uh, one word thing and I couldn't find anyone else with the name of it. So I just kept it from there, but it definitely is a little similar to Toucan, but, um, and like, I use like a logo, a bird as my logo and a lot of stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes know. it a little it bit just, more uh, confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, Cause at first I was just like, am I spelling to Toucan wrong? Yeah. Like, has it always had an O in it? <laughs> You're not the first person to tell me that. I've definitely like heard that before. And I'm like, I just kind of stuck with it. And now I'm like, well, I don't really want to change it now. I feel like it's too late to change it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, oh, yeah. And the thing is too, is because of, if it was the regular word toucan, um, you would get buried in the search because it's an mm -hmm. actual thing. It's a, a species. Right. So, you know, so it's actually kind of brilliant that it's a little bit different than oh, yeah. what it would be. So, I mean, I'm in a band whose name is based off of a person's real name. So we put an apostrophe S on the end of it. Lorenzo right, right. music is the mm. voice of Garfield, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but Lorenzo's music. Well, we show up for every search on that one. Yep. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh -huh. And it's definitely, that stuff's important. Just making sure that you are able to be found. I feel like, and like, there's some names that are just so common and reused and stuff, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I've always had trouble with name coming up with names and stuff like that for art. It, my, Cause I'm in other bands too. And like, that's, I feel like that's sometimes the toughest thing is making a good name. Yeah. Oh, so you are in other bands. Yeah, I do other uh, side projects and stuff. And honestly, like what I do the most outside of um, my own songwriting is like uh, production on beats and stuff and work with like mostly rap artists and um, yeah, that type of stuff. Which is interesting because you have, well, actually, let's go into this question. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the music of Tukon? Um, That's tough. I'd probably say like the way I would describe my own music is just... um. In terms of like genre, I would say like uh, uh, definitely like indie, but I would say honestly like mm -hmm. uh, alternative rap indie type of type of vibe. Because I know really? that on a lot of these okay. songs, I'm not really rapping, but like I'm definitely influenced a lot by that type of music. Yeah, and indie's a tough one. See, that's mm -hmm. what I'm going through right now. Is the whole like you know, what, what goddamn genre are we, you know, when mm -hmm. you start to put stuff on Spotify, it goes, what are your top three genres? And it's like, well, I can put the ones 
that it will accept like, Oh, alternative. Great. What does that even mean anymore? And now there's modern alternative and like just Mm -hmm. the subgenres, even indie indie is just like, Oh, you're self-produced. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not really, it can specify a vibe or a type of music, but when it comes down to it, like what the hell does indie mean? If they go, what's your music sound like? And you go, it's indie. And it's like, well, Uh shit, that can mean anything. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I've always had trouble with that too. Just defining my genre. I'm like, Cause like I did, I've done a lot of different styles of music. I've even like worked on like jazz stuff and stuff like that before. But um, okay. I don't, I guess I would define it like kind of, um, I'd say like almost uh, something like grunge indie, grunge okay. alternative, something like that. Yeah. All right. All right. That works too. Yeah. The uh, I've been, there's a new one that I discovered recently that kind of works. Uh, punk blues. Mm. which I'm like, okay, that's, and also it's a relatively newish one. Like there aren't a lot of people doing it right now mm-hmm. or using that tag. I don't know. So that's been kind of interesting. The, uh, it, so the other thing too, now with you doing this, you're playing guitar and singing on a lot of these. And you said that you were yeah. also doing beats for, uh, rap music and mm-hmm. jazz and all that other stuff and in other bands. And I want to get to that, but first I want to get to what you actually do, which is, so recently I like basically every weekend I go out and try and look for new music, just new stuff that's coming out there, independent artists. Mm -hmm. And one way that I do that to make sure that I'm finding just independent artists is I go to Jamendo Mm -hmm. and that's actually where I found you at. So I found your song sinking on Jamendo Mm -hmm. and truthfully, and this is, I mean, get ready for a compliment. Mm -hmm. I was just like, is this song from like a commercial? I swear to God, this oh, is yeah. in like some commercial. It's a beautiful song. Thank and you. I was just like this in, I went and looked for your stuff and it was actually kind of hard to find. Well, from Jumendo, it was mm-hmm. hard to find your stuff, but for then sure. I finally did. And I'm, I'm like, damn. So <laughs> I guess Thank you. I don't know where my question is. I'm just complimenting you complimenting the hell out of you, but, oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate but that's it. a great song. And, um, so you, you uploaded that to Jumendo. First of mm-hmm. all, how did you find out about Jumendo and so, stuff um, like that? Jumendo a while ago. So I'm like, um, basically I've been having, I really only started releasing my own music that I, with my own lyrics on it recently. And oh, I really? had a bunch of demos probably about like, um, I had like, I still have like a hundred or so songs that I just haven't done anything with yet. And I just started releasing them slowly, but I just was looking up places that I can put them out there that are not just the standard YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. And um, I'm okay with my music being used for other purposes and stuff. And like people, if people want to use it in the uh, films or TV or anything like that, like I'm open to that, but I would like to obviously get paid for it. But at the same time, I'm okay with it just getting exposure and putting it out right. there. And I forgot exactly why I started Jumendo, but I, I just thought that that one was a good fit for that type of idea using my music that way. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask is if you knew, or if you uh, purposefully looked for it, cause it's a creative commons website mm-hmm. uh, where people can download it and then put it in like the background of music videos or right. not music videos, but like videos itself. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So you did know that, but you weren't, you aren't specifically a creative commons artist. Uh, not specifically, no, but um, I'm all for it, to be honest. Like, okay, when it comes to like a uh, beat stuff, I'm a little more, I'll let people use it and stuff. But um, that's like, I've made a, some good money before doing beats and selling beats and like doing really? um, songwriting stuff for people like that type of stuff. So um, when someone, if someone wants to take my song basically, and then put it on their own stuff on Spotify, and then mm-hmm. make money off of it, which I which I don't think falls under Creative Commons. But um, no, yeah. Then I want to. I'm willing to license my stuff and that type of thing. But um, my music that I'm putting out now, I just I'm trying to think of it differently and just yeah. kind of not be so about uh trying to get like licensed and stuff through it. Right. Yeah. With Creative Commons, depending on what license you choose, there is the ability one to say do not use this commercially. And then Mm -hmm. two, do not make derivatives of this, meaning they can't switch it up or anything. It has to be used as is. And then there's also share alike, meaning 
that, well, they would have to release it under, well, actually most of them mean they would have to release it under creative commons as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing is it's like, well, then they, so they could actually be using it wrong. And that's the whole point behind it. Whereas if right. people are just doing remix culture, that's cool. But if you're going, oh, I can download these free beats, so I don't have to pay for them, but I want to make millions of dollars, right. million, millions, we're all musicians. We right. know there's no we millions. Know, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams there, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. But okay. So now going back to you saying uh making the beats and stuff mm -hmm. that i'm fascinated with so when i did find your profile which toucan official across the board is where people can find you yeah um which i i didn't even realize like i couldn't find you on instagram for some reason i must mm -hmm. have typed in toucan again because i just found it today before we started and then i was like yeah. oh there you are hell yeah uh -huh. yeah <laughs> but uh when i first found your stuff the link was to a beats site and uh -huh. i was like wait a minute and then i was very confused and I was like, wait, is he selling beats? So mm -hmm. yes, you are. Tell yeah. me about that. Tell me about, you said you've made some money in the past uh -huh. selling beats and things like that. Yeah. So, um, it's, a uh, like, I've had some like crazy opportunities in the past. Like, um, I've done, I've just used to post beats on, on YouTube as tight beats and, um, okay. really just to get them out there. Cause like, that's what I do is just make music. And I was like, why not put these out? And then um, yeah. anyway, that like led to some like really crazy opportunities and like um, a really popular rapper named uh, Zilla Kami hopped on one of them and like he just had like a leaked version of it as a song. But like anyway, that got like a few million views on YouTube and stuff. And like I never got mm -hmm. anything from it, which was kind of fucked. But like right. from that, um, that led not to even like YouTube monetization or anything mm -hmm. like that. Well, I, I was got I've gotten money from the YouTube monetization, but like. His song, like nobody even hit me up about it or anything, and it was crazy because oh, um, yeah, one of my friends who listens to his music like showed me, and I was like, "What the hell? That's literally my beat," and it was like a leak yeah. thing, and like they never reached out to me or anything, but um, it still worked out okay because like I just like commented on the YouTube and like people people followed my channel because of it and stuff, and I got credit. But um, from there it led to a lot of other opportunities, and like I've worked with other artists that have like some of the stuff I've produced for other people and. I, it has like a. There's a couple songs that have over like five million plays on Spotify that I produce for and stuff. Damn. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And I get splits on some of that stuff, but to be completely honest, on terms of like the contract side, I like screwed myself over a bit in the past and just took money when I could get money when I could have okay. definitely made more doing it differently and like actually working it out. Okay. So. Yep. That's a big part of the reason that I'm like really about what I'm doing right now and um, singing my own songs because I realized after a certain point, like I have, I can keep making songs. That's all I like to do, but I just have wasted some of these ones selling them to people just for the money in the moment when I could be mm -hmm. putting out my own songs. And like, I never even tried to do it before until this past year. Really? Mm -hmm. You got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Damn, now you've just opened up a bunch of questions in my Hell head. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you started out, you were just, you were making beats when you, you started out. Like as mm -hmm. a musician, is that how you began? Because you're also a very good guitar player. Thank you. And, yeah. 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 So, like um, I uh, learned to play drums, like drum set when I was probably like um, 14, 15. And um, I was in like jazz band in high school and did a um, marching band for a little bit. All right. And um, then that led to like playing guitar and like I've always been down to make my own music, but I got super into the production side of thing using um, FL Studio. And um, okay, so like from there that led to like learning piano and guitar and everything and like everything I'm making I record just by myself on FL Studio. Okay, that, mm -hmm. I was gonna ask later on what what DAW are you using? Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of people. Yeah, they start out early with with FL Studio and mm -hmm. they just hung with it. So yeah, you, you're still with that, huh? Yeah, and like I've uh, I've I've gotten good enough now with like um I, I've used Ableton, I've used um, Pro Tools, Logic, and stuff. And I I guess yeah, basically I'm only sticking with FL at this point because I'm like my workflow is just faster on it. I just know how, how to get what, right. what I want to get done. That's really what it comes down to. Like, mm -hmm. sure. There are probably other tools to use and all that kind of stuff, but you spend so much time figuring out how to do stuff on one. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to spend two weeks learning another one or however long it takes just trying to get it to do what I know it can do. Exactly. So, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so you were, you were using this, making it, and you had this background in music. Now, 
I'm actually very interested in the, you said you were uploading beats to YouTube and mm -hmm. they got used from YouTube. That's a process that's always kind of confused me. I've talked with mm -hmm. other people who have said that they've uploaded, they upload their beats to YouTube. I don't get it. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. I understand like SoundCloud and stuff, but like with YouTube, mm -hmm. there's a whole layer of like, how the hell do you download it and get uh, it and all, the, all that stuff. So what's the process so like, there? So um, the thing about YouTube that uh, it took me a while to learn is that if someone wants to rip something from YouTube, they can, anyone can. Like what mm -hmm. I would do is put my BeatStars link in there and like a link to the beat directly and tell people that it's free to use as long as they're not posting it on Spotify. But like what it came down to is like at a certain point, you cannot really track it. You can't really tell. But mm -hmm. like people who are serious about it would hit me up to buy leases and do it that way. But really the thing is on YouTube, like I've found people like that guy who used my beats and never mentioned it to me one time, never told me anything. And obviously his case is different when he gets a ton of views, but it's like some of these people will just rip whatever they want off of YouTube and use it. And yeah, when I was first starting out, just rapping for fun, like my friends, we would do the same things. We didn't really realize that just, just for fun, just to mess around like freestyle. But, um, it's pretty whack, honestly, for producers because there's not really a good way to protect that. You can uh, mm -hmm. use like the uh, auto sound recognition things, but really, if once you put it on YouTube for beats, particularly, like you're putting it out there for people to rip it. Yeah, no, there's a uh, there's a Twitch producer that I follow. I, of course, the name is escaping me right now because that's mm -hmm. the way it always goes. But uh, yeah, some he'll create stuff based on either like YouTube clips or whatever, but like. Mm -hmm. It didn't even occur to me the clipping feature. That's how you can do it. Like instead of downloading a whole video, you can actually just create a clip in yeah. YouTube using that feature, then download that clip. Cause there are tons of sites that go, here's how you download the clip. It takes a couple seconds. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, that mm -hmm. didn't even occur to me till I saw him do that. And then one, I'm like, going, that's brilliant. And two, I'm like going, Oh damn. Yeah. Pretty easy to take <laughs> stuff like that. But yeah. I think it, once again, like I'm okay with it. And like, I'm just think that, uh, as long as the other artists are like honest, about what they're using it for and like exactly. yeah. give credit and stuff where it's due and then it's okay. Yeah. Like, no, the attribution is the big part of it. Mm -hmm. That's really, um, I have no problem with people using our stuff. As a matter of fact, Damn. we wouldn't be meeting as, as many people as we have in the past or people had found us in the past if it weren't for people using our stuff. But yes, it exactly. was through attribution. Mm -hmm. You know, like right now there's a video game called uh, Mamaya, I believe it's called. It's uh, it's some video game that's out there and one of our songs is in it. And the funny thing is um, they, I think they may have put credits in it for our band, but they're at the end. So you have to finish the game right. to see our credits. Uh, so there are a lot of message boards out there going, what song is this? That's in this part of the thing. And right. I actually saw a post about it and cause somebody mentioned it and I was able to go like, Hey, you know, I'll put that out there for when people search the question, they'll yep. find our website. <laughs> uh -huh, you know? So uh -huh. they gave us attribution. It's just in the end credits. And it's like, well, you have to finish the game for that. Mm -hmm, that <laughs> yep. And like, they credited you. You can't really complain, but that's pretty whack. Like nothing you can really do about that. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. It's, uh -huh. You know, but still I found it. I learned about it. That's cool. Uh -huh. um, now with uh, making, let's go into your actual, uh, not your actual, but your uh -huh. songwriting version of what you do. Mm -hmm. So you decided to actually put, putting, uh, can't say a sentence here. You decided to start actually putting songs of yours out there. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your process when writing a song? Because you are producing them, I would say as, uh, as much as you're doing beats, like you've right. produced a lot of music, you've more so even than when I first discovered you. So mm -hmm. uh, what is your songwriting process? For sure. Yeah. So um, that's definitely true too, is that now I spend about equal amount of time, um, songwriting compared to producing but basically a lot of times i'll just start with a uh, guitar or piano and um try to find some simple chords and then from there i'll kind of like make a beat out of it and mm -hmm. once i get it like structured like that i'll try to start to put lyrics on it start to come up with like a theme and um something that i've like learned how i work well now is that like i have to be continuing like to start new ones, start new projects. Like I'm really bad at coming, coming back to my old projects and stuff. So like a lot okay. of days I will literally just force myself. I shouldn't say force myself cause I have a good time doing it, but I'll get a try to whip out a song and get it done. Or like a, at least like a one minute version of a song in like four or five hours. And like, 
just get it done. Really? Get it to that point. Uh Uh-huh. I'm trying to work up to that, but you're saying Mm -hmm. you actually achieve it. Yeah, I'm like, honestly, I think it has to do, once again, with just my my workflow from producing before. So, like, I can get the beat to the point where I want it now sometimes in, like, 30 minutes. And, like, obviously, I'm going to do more to it. But that's where I'll just leave it and let it it loop while I'm writing lyrics or let it uh, come up with, like, two separate parts and try to just go from there. But, like, always I start with the music. And then sometimes I'll have an idea or, like, have an almost full song on acoustic guitar with like lyrics and then try to put it together. But, um, I don't know. I've tried it different approaches, but I have the best success when I'm just like in the vibe, try to do it all at once, even if it takes like seven, eight hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Now tell me about your beat making process. Cause that's actually, I've been, uh, I've been dabbling with, we're putting out a remix album this July and along with people submitting remixes, I'm like, why the hell am I not doing one? So I decided mm-hmm. to do one. Not just, it, not as easy as you might think if you've never done it before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm getting there. The first one just sounded like I redid one of our songs. It just mm-hmm. sounds like I wrote another one of our songs. But then I was like, okay, so I started trying different samples and beats. Now, I will say the hardest thing for me is the beat creation, first of all. Mm-hmm. The, uh, because it's, I'm trying to make it sound like a live kit. So how mm-hmm. are you putting together beats? Like, what's your go-to? Are you using a drum machine in general? Are um, you using certain samples? Like, what, uh-huh. what are you doing for drum sounds? So, um, yeah, for drum sounds, a lot of times um, I have an electric drum set that okay. I use uh, for all, like, the live record, for all the songs recording that I've been putting out because um, it's using MIDI drums to create a realistic sound is, like, super hard. But what I'll do a lot of times is to start, because I record the drums a lot of times last, too, so I can make it go with my voice or whatever where I want, change the beat up a little bit. Oh, okay. But I will normally just have a steady eight hi-hat with just a snare and just, like, use mm-hmm. some basic trap drum sounds and then just kind of mm-hmm. build off that as my metronome. And then I'll mute it at some point and then start adding in other elements and then try to change up the drums from there. But, like, mm. definitely a lot of times the drums still come out the same way, like, just in a typical... 4-4 four, four pattern, you know? I don't know what to call it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> in terms of MIDI drums, like, I have know exactly what you're saying. It's super hard to make them get that realistic sound Yeah. without using an electric drum set or recording drums. And, like, that's something I've learned because I've done it before, but it, it's that hard to get that human sound out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing I just started toying with, and I don't know if you've ever done this, um, so, you know, you'll sit there and you're thinking of the beat and you're trying to, you're looping it back and forth while you're writing it by hand, you know, writing mm-hmm. the MIDI beat. Um, I started doing a thing where I started beatboxing. I record a beatbox track to the click, try to make mm-hmm. it match up, get it the way I like sounding it, or, you know, even doing it just humanly. Mm-hmm. And then on the track underneath, I've started writing the MIDI beat. Right. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It at least makes the loop sound less, you know, regimented. Right, right, um, right. So it's got, it's, that's one thing I've been trying. I'm not saying that's it's perfect. I'm just saying I tried it. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's smart. And like, I, that's like, uh, I've never like, uh, tried to like record it doing that, but like definitely in my head, I'm like beatboxing, trying to imagine yeah. where to put stuff. And like, when you're trying to visualize it, like on a sequencer or like a pattern on FL studio or whatever doll you're using, it's like a little harder to do that. And like, that's why I just like, um, I think learning drums really early for me was like a really important thing for beat making mm-hmm. and just music in general, just to understand that like counting and rhythm and all that stuff. But drums are definitely one of the harder things I'd say to, especially to make mm-hmm. it realistic. All right. And with you recording your stuff, uh, I'm assuming you have a studio in your home or do you have a separate studio? I have a studio at my house. Okay. What's that setup like? So, um, basically I just got, uh, uh, two monitors and my sub and, uh, I got my desk set up. I'm in it right now, but I've got an electric drum set. Um, and then a MIDI keyboard. And basically I just run everything through a USB interface and I run that straight to FL. And, um, basically like my outside of the drum set, my setup's pretty small, but, uh, cause I run everything through MIDI and guitars and like, Except for when I'm doing drums on like beats, I won't use the MIDI. I won't use I won't use the drum pad things. I just put it in a lot of times just because it's easier. You, but um, yeah, like the actual. You're saying you use the actual kit, right? 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 Okay. And um, when I'm 
doing like MIDI stuff, I'll pretty much for every synth I use, every bass or anything, I'll go through MIDI. But for some of those songs, like that singing one you listen to, I'll uh, use a real bass for that too. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I love the sound of MIDI bass and mm -hmm. I have a go-to that really is, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And if you throw a little bit of fuzz on there, it's even better, but yeah, it's still no slides. I can't do mm -hmm. the slides. Like that's mm -hmm. my main problem. It's like, exactly. I wish I, I'm doing a song right now that needs a slide mm -hmm. and I can't. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have like a multi-track sound card and all that too? What's your setup there? Um, so like, uh, I run through like, um, I run through a focus right that has a ton of outputs on it right now and inputs. So okay. like really everything I do though is basically like the way I produce it is just layers at a time. But like when I, when I'm playing with a band, we can record through that way, but really I just have it all on my computer and um, really just running straight through the doll for like everything. And um, okay. I've got like a mastering thing that I run through it and stuff and like some basic plugins and stuff that I'm using for most things. But really my setup is, fairly simple i would say like i've been to yeah. studios and stuff too and worked there but uh mine's basically like a standard home studio setup okay all right i mm -hmm. was just curious if you had uh because we right now we're up to 16 channel and now everybody's mm -hmm. pushing for 24 and even while they're talking about 24 channel they're going you know but it would be better if it was 32 and i'm like jesus uh -huh. yeah oh yeah <laughs> like it uh -huh. never ends <laughs> mm -hmm. it gets crazy with that yeah yeah, yeah. i'm using like a I have mine has eight right now and like definitely the more you have the better, but I mean, I can work with two also. I'm like, it's just, yeah, honestly, like I just always view all of these tools and stuff. It's like MIDI keyboard I have and stuff is not that nice or anything, but you know how it is. It's just, uh, right. Just makes the process easier again, but it's like not net. You can make music with nothing basically, you know? Right. Yeah. You could write it by mm -hmm. hand. I talked to a musician a few weeks back and they're like, they write everything by hand. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't play the instruments or anything. Me, I don't have the patience, oh, but yeah, uh, and, and as far as using the keyboard, I just went out and got a MIDI one that was like 70 bucks from right. target just because all you need is the interface. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the music videos that you do for these songs, you do mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, lyric videos for them. Yeah. First of all, how are you making those? Um, I'm just using CapCut for those. And then oh, you I'm are. using okay. um, Yeah, CapCut's really dope, honestly. It's like really good, I think, yeah. especially for free program. I, I agree. I use it mm -hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I just um for the video footage, I just like use that website Pexels, I think it's called, for mm -hmm. um royalty free stock footage basically. And then I'll just like affect it a little bit, loop it by reversing it, and then just like loop it from there and then just put some put the lyrics over top of it, put some simple like animation on that too. And I'm like, that's basically all I do. Okay. Have you ever considered doing uh one man streams? I know you've posted some reels where it's you playing in front of mm -hmm. just your phone camera, mm -hmm. but have you ever considered doing live streams or even just live videos of you Definitely. performing? Definitely. Yeah. Like that's something I've been thinking about a lot. And, um, I don't really know like the, uh, I've seen like they have that on Twitch. A lot of people will stream them making beats and stuff. And like, um, yeah. yeah, like that's definitely something I've considered. It's more for me just about the, um, cause like I've done, I've done like Instagram lives before where I've done a similar thing, but I want to have it running through my computer. You might be the guy to tell me this. I want to okay. have the, my sound running through my computer from it and then to the um, live on there. So it's the actual sound coming through my computer, but that's something I'm not really sure how you go are you saying that. on instagram live not even for instagram but like on twitch even. okay how can i have i was going to say so... for instagram live you can mm -hmm. because there's no there's no uh software that will connect to okay. Inst or, or to instagram live except your phone mm -hmm. um but yes there is so think of it this way it took me a while to figure this out so mm -hmm. you're saying you want the full controlled sound going into a two track out into yeah. twitch yeah. So what you do is you connect all your stuff through, at least this is how I did it. We use a, a DAW called Ardor. Mm -hmm. It's an open source DAW, but it'll probably be the same for Fruity Loops. Basically what you do is you open up, uh, you use OBS to connect to Twitch. Mm -hmm. And in OBS, you uh, can just connect the, go to the master bus of your Fruity Loops and in the router connection, routing connection and the output mm -hmm. of the master, you connect that to OBS or you connect it to your master sound card and it goes directly from that into OBS. I can't remember the exact okay. way that you would do it, but the concept is, is you look to the routing grid of your 
audio from your master bus mm -hmm. in Fruity Loops and connect that to OBS into a two, two channel input. It might need okay. to be a plugin that you add to the audio, but that's how you get the full sound. So you control all the buses and it's hearing what you would hear on your master bus as yes. the output rather than the desktop audio. So yes, that's how you do it. Okay, word, I'm gonna look into that. Cause yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I meant. Cause like, yeah, it's like going, going through the live on, um, you know, playing guitar is like different and singing just mm -hmm. like, I can use my phone screen for that, but yeah, like, to do some of these production ones, like, cause I've seen those videos where they got their screen share on it too. And like, yep. that's what I would think would be cool to do. But like, I definitely would like to start doing something like that. Yeah. And that's the way too, where you could create a beat, have it run in a loop and then just play along with it with an open track that's recording your guitar. Like that's right. the way you can do anything you can do in the DAW. That's what they're hearing on, on Twitch. That's so, dope. Yeah. yeah. That's what I yeah. want. It took me a while to find that. And then when I found it, I'm just like, Jesus, it's so obvious. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, I was thinking, I'm like, I have no idea where even like how to Google that. Right. Yep. No. Nope. And it might, like I said, it might be an audio connection rather than the, the regular connection that it goes through. But that's cause like with us, I have to connect it through the sound card um, uh, interface that we use. Cause I'm on a Linux uh, a Linux laptop, it's uh, Jack Audio is the thing that you use to connect the audio cards. Okay. So there's a Jack Audio plugin, but that would be different for whatever operating system you're using. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Or it might just go directly in. Like I said, I've never done it on your system before, right. so who knows? Yeah, it I might know, even be different. easier than mine. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, okay, and then when you put this stuff out, like promoting yourself and mm -hmm. doing, so you're putting out all these beats, you're putting out all these songs at the same mm -hmm. time. Like, how are you getting the word out there? What are, you know, what do you do with it once you're done writing the song and going, here's all the platforms and the videos sure. and everything for this song. What do you mm -hmm. do with it after that? Um, so like for these ones that I'm putting out now that are actually the songs, like honestly, like in the past, you know, I promoted myself and like tried to like reach out to other artists and stuff like that. But like, I'm realizing that doing it with this type of music is just different. And it's like, you can't really promotion something I want to learn more about because it's like, I don't want to force my music down people's throats or make them tell them they got, got to come listen to it, you know? Right. And like, I like to put it out there, but it's like, I'm not about like, I can make those reels I put on Instagram and stuff, but like, that's not really what I like to do. And like, mm -hmm. so like, that's really what I do the most though outside of that is to promote it. it honestly, it's just like make little simple videos and stuff. But like, I kind of hate how in the today's like music industry stuff to push yourself, you do have to be like an influencer of some sort, you know, and like, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. And there's like, I have mad respect for the people who are able to do both of those at the same time. But it's like, I feel like that almost takes away from the music in some ways. Like that's how you got to be that way to promote it type of thing. But um, I don't know, promotion something that's hard for me. And like, I, because I'm making so much music, I kind of move on from them relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. But my idea is to make a some sort of album or EP out of these, even some of the ones that are released already, and um, try to spend actual money and time promoting that. But like, in the meantime, right now, I'm really just putting out music that I like and like music that I've been making. So you're saying in the end, you'd like to take songs that you've like released through, I see that you're using DistroKid, like mm -hmm. songs you take from DistroKid and then put them in an album? Something like that, yeah. Or like, like even like to like redo them professionally at some point, finish them up. Something okay. like that. And like, that's why like, yes, these songs are like my, uh, they're like the, I, completely the vision of the song I have, but like, I've been playing uh, these songs with a band too lately. And like the way that those yeah. out sound a lot different and like, we're going to start trying to play live shows using it and stuff like that too. So like, I'm just realizing, cause I, this is new from in music for me is to actually like go back to these songs and perfect them. But it seems to a lot easier right. to do it live as opposed to just on the doll. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the band that you uh, hooked up with. How did that start? So, um, yeah, they're really just my friends and they're my music friends. And, um, you know, they know I write a lot of music and like, we just start, we just been jamming for a while already and, um, kind of taught them how to play some of my songs. And now we're like starting to figure them out and they're like adding their own stuff to them too. And like, okay. it's really good for me to hear that because, you know, like that's what I'm realizing. Like I was said with the just like adjusting it live is like I'm hearing ideas that I didn't think of before and like having other people's creativity and like their input in it is actually like yeah. really useful, really useful. Mm -hmm. 
I'll agree. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll just do something while they're messing around with something. And you're like, wait, what right. was that? Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah, my favorite. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the time they'll be like, what? I wasn't doing anything. And it's uh-huh. like, no, you were. What were yeah. And then you got to try and make them remember uh-huh. what they just did. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that happens to me a lot. Um, the, uh, it, so with that, this music that you're putting out, you're, so you're playing with the band. And I saw that you have a show actually booked right now. You, you mm-hmm. just posted a show that you have coming up. Yeah, uh, how are you booking um, those shows? How have I been booking them, you said? Yeah. Um, so uh this is actually gonna be like the first real one. And like we've done some like little shows for our friends and stuff, just like basically having a party and then playing at our house. But um hmm. I've uh found these through um I we have been going to some local shows basically they're in the Denver area. And I took talked to a few of the bar people there, the owners and stuff at these bars, and um they just sent me a like list of emails and told me to hit up these people and that basically oh. they'll connect you through other artists and stuff. So like, it was honestly easier than I expected. Cause I know that a lot of these shows work like too, that like you have to pay up front for the tickets and stuff. But right. um, these ones seem to be pretty good where it's like, you don't pay anything up front, but you just don't get paid as long as if you don't sell or if not enough people click your link, do the ticket things. It's like 20 for 20%, something like that. So like it ended up to like 50% of the splits and then split from there. But booking it was surprisingly easy. And like the people who are talking to were super nice and chill and made it easy. So like, cause that's something I'm new to too. And I had no idea, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys have any plans for like uh, doing a tour or going out even farther than the Denver area? I mean, that's the dream for sure. Like um, okay. right now we're just like, uh, trying to really like look for more and like honestly i want to play i'm i feel like really ready to play live and like if i could find more shows i would do them but it's not like uh that easy because there is a lot of the opportunities in denver at least where it is you can pay four hundred dollars to reserve your spot and you can play an hour or whatever but it's like i'm not really yeah. about that like i want the experience but i'm not gonna pay okay. that right <laughs> and the the album that you have uh or that you're thinking of putting out so you don't really you want to put out an album but you just haven't really thought about doing it yet is what you're saying yeah i just haven't really uh like thought it through enough yet because like basically like i'm putting out music like i am and like putting it out frequently of these songs when writing just because i have so many saved up from the past year and like i'm finishing some here and there and like i'm just my idea is to like put out enough singles at first i would say or like just have something on Spotify for people to go yeah. back to before I put out an album, just so that way when I'm putting out something I really promote, there's something else they can go back to it. So it's not just five songs, you know, on Spotify or okay. whatever. And the reason I asked that is because I'm curious if you're actually thinking of maybe putting out a physical product for it or not, or is that just like, is there no reason to? I think that would be super cool. Like, um, like, just from like my side of things, like always I've not been like a lot of the work I've done for people has been strictly over the internet and like, yeah, just working from home, you know, type of thing. And like, um, but like, I think that like when I'm, we're starting to do these shows and stuff that it's just like a new realm of that. And like a physical product works really well in that type of area of music. Mm-hmm. And like, but it's like up until now when I'm not playing shows and stuff, it's like, there's not really a reason to, print a CD of it, you know, or, um, right. Even have merch necessarily, but like, that's something that would be really cool. I think now. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know if there was anything in the works and I wanted to mm-hmm. see if I could find that out. And uh, I just remembered another thing too. So when you, before, when you were talking about like, you know, you'll do a song in like in eight hours, mm-hmm. um, th- and a lot of them. So the thing that I always struggle with, and it's, and for me, the very last thing I do, unless I just happen to have something that I came up with that's, you know, brilliant Mm -hmm. is lyrics. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have good melodies, great beats, a good guitar line, but you have lyrics. They're not just repeating the same thing over and over again. There are new melodies, lots of different lyrics. So the lyric writing, uh, it seems like it's easy for you. What's your mm-hmm. secret? I guess is my question. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, it definitely does come like a little easy for me. And like, I think what a big part of it is, is, um, I used to actually rap like a lot and like, okay, just for always for fun, but like writing raps, like really opened my, uh, mind to just like 
the uh, the concept of like flow and like so like when i'm uh when i'm coming up with lyrics i'll like have the beat playing and i'll listen to it you know over and over for mm -hmm. hours but i'll be start by humming something and like making it mumbling some nonsense and like trying to find yeah. cadences with my voice first and then basically from there i'm like trying to just fit syllables but like obviously sometimes i'll have a theme or something i want to say and like even if it's something that's like three words mm -hmm. that i want to say that i know i want to say i'll like not even start it with that, but I'll, then I'll start to like put down some lines that kind of fit that idea. And then like, once I get something going, like up to like four lines, I would say normally I'll start to like, think of it as like, like a, that should be a flow switch or that should be a something that needs to happen with my voice to change there. And then I'll kind of flow repeat switch. that process. What's that? What was what's, that? What's flow switch? So like a flow switch, I would say like, um, like I could repeat the same, like a uh, cadence, with the same like basically amount of syllables like uh -huh. two times let's say and then like just like i would imagine like then it goes from da 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 to like da 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 something like that you know just like something simple where it can change the uh cadence more than the words okay and like when i'm thinking of that then i'm like basically trying to fill in the like a puzzle kind of like this part can repeat again or like split it into sections kind of in a way where it's like, that huh. is repeated here, repeated here. And like, sometimes you can make a, you know, a, a, a melody that one part of the melody only happens one time in like a verse, mm -hmm. but a separate part can be repeated. And like, I'm just kind of filling in a puzzle after I get to that point. But basically like, I think rapping helped me see that in a good way yeah. and like differently. So you're saying that the background music, the the bed of the music doesn't change, but you're saying there'll be a spot where it kind of the lyrics change to show progress or or at yeah. least a progression. The flow the flow changes you were talking yeah. about, and then does it go back? Is it kind of like a limerick where it starts out with da 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 like that? Kind of, yeah, 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 and like it doesn't there, yeah, like that's exactly right. It doesn't have to be like that, and like it doesn't have to even repeat. But like that idea is exactly it. So like, yeah, the okay. music can be stay exactly the same, but with your voice, you can bring in another, basically like thinking of your voice as an instrument. Yeah. And then like from there, when you come up with some other melody or some flow right there, then you can piece words together for that part too. At least that's like how okay. I try to go about it and think of it. Okay. And then I like the repeating it and humming stuff. And yeah, just mm -hmm. making the nonsense noise and then going, did that sound like a word? And then right. build a word off from there. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. my biggest flaw is I'll think of a cool lyric. And then mm -hmm. when I go to sing it, I'm like, Oh, that word sounds so stupid to sing. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. The and there's worst some part. words that are definitely <laughs> like that where I have the same problem. Yeah, I'll try to, I'll have some good, like meaningful lyrics. And then I try to sing it. I'm like, yeah, I can't say it like that. Or I'm not to change the way that this is somehow to make it work. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> that's just like the word and, being sung just sounds corny <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. definitely and something i think that helped me too is um i try to write on paper like more than i used to because it's just only write on my phone yeah but writing on papers i think is really good because like on your phone i've seen people do it where they'll just like write something and then like keep deleting it keep trying to fix it up but it's like when you have it written on paper mm. it's kind of more like set and like mm -hmm. you can still change it but it gives you something so you can't just constantly keep going back to it you know yeah all you can do is scribble it uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. <laughs> okay all right all right i get that and then um so you have a show coming up and then what other things do you have that that are coming up in the future or things that you'd like to do that you'd like to tell people about um well like we're gonna for sure try to keep doing shows um me and my band and like uh um in terms of other things like i'm just gonna like in the future we definitely do want to like do a lot more shows and try to go yeah. outside of denver and um put out an album you know and like really like music is just like all our, is what i really enjoy doing so like something i plan to continue doing forever and like um in terms of like production stuff and stuff like that i continue plan to continue to do that as well but um really just like am focused on this songwriting stuff i'm putting out now and um you know like i'm not the type of person to like tell them i'm gonna do something like 
specific but like can I, mm-hmm. I don't even like really necessarily have any like solid plans but like right plan is to continue doing it and keep putting out music and um trying to really build off of this and like play some live shit and like do it do it the best we can yeah and mm-hmm. yeah no you are consistent you do put a lot of stuff out there like Thanks. i said yeah, uh-huh. yeah and then if people wanted to listen to more of your stuff or find out more about you where could they go do that um check out my uh instagram it's too con official and uh got stuff on youtube too and there's beats on there too con official um and then on instagram also or i just said instagram too con official soundcloud mm-hmm. too con and then uh spotify too con t-o-u-c-o-n okay and any plans to make a website or anything in the future you know that's something too that i definitely like i'm writing down some of th- those things like that that would just be good for uh you know cleaning up social media and connecting it off is the fact that you had to find me through my beat star is like something's wrong with the way I have that link. Like <laughs> you found me, right. but damn. <laughs> well, and also it was the thing too. I'm like, is this the same? Is this the right person? And then I saw. Mm-hmm. The, I think there was a link to your Twitter there, and mm-hmm. then your Twitter showed that you uh, some of your most recent videos. And I'm like, oh, there's mm-hmm. the song that I found. Hell so yeah, it okay, took yeah. me a while to think if it was even the same person. My yeah. bad. Yeah, I need to <laughs> something about the way I have all that links. I got to figure that out. But yeah, it's like. Really, I'm at just least like, get a link tree or something that know, has all of the things on there. <laughs> That's easy. I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. Do you can do that right now when we're done with this? I literally will. I will, <laughs> literally will. I need that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I, I was like, when you hit me up on that email and I saw it was through BeatStars, I'm like, man, I don't know how he even like found me. <laughs> <laughs> Persistence. I really uh-huh. wanted to talk to you. That's Hell what yeah. happened. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad <laughs> to do it. Yeah. And uh, no, thanks so much for doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I got to meet you today. For sure.